and welcome to Nani Notes. Well, here it's time to um, well get our protractor out and do some work. And we're going to start right here. I'm going to take the protractor now. I've got this one. Check it out. This is this protractor has its vertex right there. And I'm going to line this protractor up with this ray AB because I'm trying to draw a specific angle. And we just want to make sure we keep reviewing how to use a protractor. Remember, it. I mean, I'm sweeping this way. See, and that's the outer scale. You see it's getting bigger, 10, 20, 30, uh, 40, 50, 60. We're trying to go for 67, about like that. And then you're going to go ahead and draw your 67 degree, right there, 67 degree um, angle in there. And we're going to call that, I'm going to realign this protractor and then move it out of the way for a wee bit. See, we're going to call this angle a central angle because BAC has its center, has its center right there in the center of the circle. And, um, now, and now I'm going to introduce another vocabulary word. We're going to say it intercepts this arc. That means it cuts through the circle and it, cu it carves out this arc, BC or CB. And um, the neat thing here, just like, uh, just like it says there, if the measure of this central angle is 67 degrees, that is if BAC is 67 degrees, then the measure of the arc is also 67 degrees. Can't get any simpler than that. So again, the, that is the central angle. The measure of the central angle equals the measure of the intercepted arc and vice versa. The measure of the intercepted arc equals the measure of the intercepted angle. Now, I asked you to draw another angle on there, CAD. Now, you've got the ray AC, so that means, of course, we're going to have another central angle. We can put our instrument right there, and again, if I want to go 103 degrees, remember, I'm going this way. Some of you are still reading the wrong scale. That's 60, that's 90, 100 is on this side. Clearly, it's obtuse, 100, and then, well, wait. And then uno, dos, tres, and then there you go. That's about a 103 degree angle. And I'll, uh, for my simulation there, and then we'll just draw it. And I'm going to move my protractor out of the way for now. And um, let's see what we've got here. Well, the measure of this arc, I can see that this is also a central angle. This is 103 degrees. That is the angle CAD is 103 degrees. And of course, um, that makes the arc CD, and that would be this arc, also 103 degrees. Now, the neat thing, of course, is that these arcs are additive. And uh, you guessed it. If I, want, if I did the adding the angles, BAD, well, see, that's almost, that's almost a straight angle. I'm going to add those two numbers up, and I'm going to get a big 170. So those two angles are going to add up to 170 degrees. And as you would imagine, that means that this arc, BD, is also 170 degrees. A little redundant on the sign there. Sorry about that. And um, But for, uh, did I leave something else off BC? Oh, I guess I put it down here, too. Golly, I, I know. I, I guess we didn't need to do it. That's a little redundant. And then we've got CD right there. And CD is, of course, 103. But some of you might have, I know somebody in the class would say, wait a minute. How about if I take my protractor and I measure it this way? Well, nothing to stop you. This time, though, you're starting the scale from here. If I'm going to say that the angle CAD is 103, I'm going to go to my 90. You know, wherever 90 is. That one 90? No, that one's 90. And then there's my 100, and then there's my 103. So I could have put it down here. And just to show that, um, you know, that was the alternate location. And that is actually also true as well. I'm going to call it D2, because in that case, I'm looking at this arc. So, in, you know, I guess that's, uh, in, in this case, the arc CD is, well, it's just going to, what is that going to be? 
Oh, oh, hang on a second, BT. In this case, it's going to be um, my 103 minus the 67. And I guess that would be what, 103 minus 67? 103 minus 67, is that right? Well, you guys check it out, verify that for me. And um, that's it, that's a simple concept. See, normally this can be confusing because in this case, one's rotating clockwise, one's rotating counterclockwise, but the fact is, that these cent or these intercepted arcs are equal to their respective central angles. So um, hey, let's get to another. Let's move to the next page because this is another concept we're going to need. And we use a slightly different. We're going to mix up our protractor. This one's got the vertex here. That's like the ones we started out with a long time ago. And um, I want you to draw. Well, we're going to make an angle here. I really don't know. It doesn't have to be anything special. I think in my example, I made it 97. Yeah, I just like that number. And um, I'm going to draw a ray. Oops. Because I, I made it a little more than 97. And um, go ahead and measure that. And then I want you to take this angle, take your protractor, and swing it around like this. And measure that same angle. Now, if it was 97, back this up. Yeah, I guess that's my 90. Then I'd have to be going this way. It looks like more than 97, looks like about that. But you measure it up with your protractor, make them the same. Because the moral of the story here is that we've got congruent angles. Now that's an important concept because I've got these congruent angles and um, well, these two arcs must be congruent. And again, I could put numbers in there. I could put 100. If these were each 100, these arcs would both be 100. If they were 110, both the arcs would be 110. Now, that's going to be true whether they look like this or whether they overlap. That would be trickier and harder to see. But we'll try to keep our examples more relevant and more straightforward. So that looks pretty good. And I'm purposely drawing it this way. Pick an angle measurement where you don't end up looking like, see, like, like the lines are straight across from each other. That's, I, I don't want you to think it has to be that case. So there's no collinearity going on here with any three of these five points. So we're just going to draw, pick an angle like that. I guess about 100 works good too. And you've got the tick marks for the angles. You've got the arcs. And now watch this. I know that all radii of the same circle are congruent because CA, CD, CB, and CE are all the radius of the same circle. They must be the same. And um, that means I've got congruent triangles by side angle side. Now that's going to give me something else. That's going to give me corresponding parts of congruent triangles congruent, which is going to tell me that AB is congruent to DE. And the result, this is what I want you to know. This is your takeaway. Uh, the central angles are congruent, the intercepted arcs are congruent, and the chords, associated chords, are congruent. So really, all three of these things go together. Uh, the central angles, the intercepted arcs, and the related chords. Wow. Hey, that's pretty good. Let's just do a couple, um, oh, well, brief... Um, a brief mention of this, just in case. Um, Got to mention, too, that throughout this class, you're going to see major and minor arcs. And the red one is a minor arc. Imagine you're running around the water tower. You want to get from A to B. The smart person goes the short way. That's the minor arc. And that's the one we're going to assume. We always assume the minor arc. Who wants to go the long way? Uh, notice that the major arc is denoted here with three letters because it's saying, well, A, you gotta go through D to get to B. That's telling you to take the blue route. Uh, these will be angles greater than 180. You know, honestly, we're not gonna use them a whole lot, but you gotta know the difference. In this case, this circle is divided into a, a major arc and a minor arc, which add up to 360. Okay, that'll come up later on in the course. And whoa, how about a few examples here? Let's just do some measuring, quick and easy. Now, if this is a central angle, 
and I've got diameters here. Well, this is easy, easy enough. I can say, well, hang on. Well, 170, a linear pair, so this angle's got to be 110. And, um, well, actually, let's just do it this way. This arc has to be 70. And, of course, if this linear pair is 110, so is this arc. And I'm going out over here. I've got seven. I have vertical angles, 70, 70. And of course, the intercepted arc is then 70 degrees. I've got 45 degrees. And that means its intercepted arc is 45. And I subtract these two from, I'm going to subtract them from 180. Because again, I was told that EB is a diameter. And there you go. I should have one, two, three, four, five of these arcs that will add up to 360. Now to add these up, uh, it's a simple matter. Come on, how easy is it? Do I have to do them all for you? Probably not. BC is 70. That's easy. How about DB? Where's DB? Well, I've got DB, so you're going to take this arc and add this arc. Come on, guys. Can you do that? Well, of course you can. Uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll leave you a couple. Uh, but I want to just check them first. You're going to add these two together, and that's going to give you AD. I'll let you do that. A, C, D. Well, A, C, D. That means you're going all the way around to there. So that is going to be a major arc. Notice the three letters. And that's going to be 245. I've got my 180, and I'm going to add the 65 to it. D, C. No, too easy. A, E. Yeah, also easy. How about A, B, C? Well, A, B, C is really going to be the same as ADC because it looks like a semicircle. So what do you think that's going to be? Yeah, 180. EAC, another major arc, EAC. So you're going to go the long way. You're going to go from EAC. You've got, looks like you've got a 180 and add 70 to it. I'll let you do the math on that one. Okay, I did it for you. So check your work and um, then you can move on to your next assignment. And uh, thank you for watching Nani Notes.